Greetings from Tokyo. I'm Trip. I'm Trip, and welcome to the Hammer of Wrath. This week, you and I are. You and I are going to return to the cursed city. Let's go. Thanks for joining me in the studio. This week, we continue our journey through the Cursed City by painting the Vicos Bloodborne Vampire Trio, as well as their hunter, Jelson Derrick. But first, I want to take 30 seconds to talk about Halloween in Japan. Now, when I first traveled to Japan in 2006, Halloween wasn't a thing. But over the last nearly 20 years, it has grown into a cultural phenomenon and is almost as popular now as it is in America. And if you step into any convenience store in Japan, you will find an array of snacks and desserts done in a Halloween theme. In fact, Halloween has gotten so big in Japan that for the last several years, a massive crowd of over 250,000 people in costume has gathered in Shibuya in Tokyo. It's gotten so dangerous, in fact, that this year, the city council just sort of shut all of that down and they've barricaded streets and there was an advertising campaign in the month leading up to Halloween saying, don't come to Shibuya. Now, despite adopting so much about Halloween, including costumes and parties, there are a few things that are a bit different. One, kids don't trick or treat here. It's just not a thing. What does happen though is that the local town councils get together and arrange a spooky walk. So in a nearby park, you'll have some volunteers, you register at the main table, you get a stamp card. Listen, stamp rallies are a whole thing here and that could be its own video. And the kids dressed in their costumes go from station to station around the park and when they reach each station they get a stamp on their card and then they either answer a riddle, play a game, or maybe do rock, paper, scissors with the person that's at that station to get a treat. It's a bit different but the kids love it all the same. And that is how Halloween is celebrated in Japan. Well, let's talk about what we're going to build and paint this week as we return to the Cursed City. So this week, we are going to paint the Vicos Bloodborne Vampire Trio and Jelson Derrick. Let me show you how I did it. Now, I didn't talk much about this in my previous videos, but in order to make the models match the playboards for Cursed City, I purchased these cobblestone bases on Colts 3D and printed them out as base toppers. Assembling the models was a snap. Honestly, these kits are so exceptionally well designed and engineered that they go together without really much hassle at all. And we used some super glue to join the resin and plastic parts. I primed the miniatures in white and then I did an underspray or shadow spray of purple because we want these to have sort of an undead and otherworldly appearance. And once that was dry, I went ahead and applied a wash. This is Druki Violet and Lamian Medium in a one to two mix to make sure that it's not too potent. I like the way it settles into the recesses. Once that was all set, I started applying my grays here. We're just gonna do the fur and also the hair as a base. Later, we'll hit these with some washes and contrast paints as well as create some gradients. And then I'll work my way around all three of the models painting the leather straps using some Beastie Brown. Here I'm moving on to the armor. We're just using Games Workshop's Lead Belcher. Uh, it's one of my favorite paints of all time. I, I know I've talked about it before in other videos, but it covers really well, even over white, as you can see here. Just making sure to mix it with a little water on our brush. And now we're gonna move on to the hair. Here I'm using Blood Angel's Contrast and just placing that over. And then I'm gonna use a little water. I'm gonna clean my brush off, use a little water, and then sort of fade that gradient in. Once the armor is dry, we'll go back through and we're gonna use Agrax Earth Shade to shade all the recesses in the armor. And then we'll apply some contrast wildwood over the fur to give it sort of this dark brown tinge. I've added a little Blood Angels contrast to the eyes and I'm highlighting the teeth here with some white. Then we're gonna take a very, very fine brush here and just give them some black eyes, almost like a shark's eyes. And of course you can't have a vampire without blood. So we're just using a little blood for the blood god here, putting that around their mouths and maybe some drips on their chest. I wanted this one to look like he maybe ripped somebody's heart out with his bare hands. So we'll put a little there. It's easy to go overboard on this stuff. Juan Hidalgo has this great simple tutorial on how to match the color of the printed Cursed City bases. 
And we're just gonna use a little Thunderhawk blue here, dry brush some seafoam green on top of that. And the key to everything is a Games Workshop wash called Coelia Green Shade. A few final details, we wanna dirty up their feet. You can't run around a ruined city and have clean feet. And we want to enhance that blood splatter using an old painter's trick by flicking the bristles of a brush. We paint the rim of the base to match our set, and it's time to move on to the Vampire Hunter. All of the hero sculpts in this set are great, and Jelson Derrick is no exception. Might be my favorite in the entire box, and this is the character I'm going to play when my family plays together. So like the other heroes, we're going to depart a little bit from the official artwork here, and instead of a brown leather jacket, I thought maybe a green canvas duster would be better. So using my airbrush, I've applied two different greens here, one slightly darker and more chromatic along the bottom, and then we'll go ahead and apply some Athonian camo shade into all the recesses on this. That's going to drop everything back, unify those two colors, and when that's dry, I'm going to take like an olive drab green, mix in just the tiniest bit of yellow, and then dry brush all of my highlights to bring those out. With the coat all set, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the metallics. Again, we're just using Games Workshop's lead belcher here, working our way around the model and hitting all of the metallics. And like on the vampires, for the leather, we're going to use Beastie Brown. We're going to use that on his satchel, his gloves, and any belts or straps that he has. Here for the scabbard, I'm going to introduce a very subtle sort of color. So I've mixed some pink and some brown together to create a desaturated purple. And on all the woods, this is the stakes or the stock of his rifle. We're going to use burnt umber to separate those from the leathers. Now with both of those browns down, we're just going to apply Agrax Earthshade over everything in order to bring out the shadows and details. Here I'm just working my way around the leathers. And if it gets on the metal, that's fine because our next step in the process is going to be covering all the metallics with this same color. Again, I like to use this instead of Nuln Oil because it sort of antiques the metal as it shades it. And there are a few places on the model where we want to bring out the buckles and buttons using this brass color. Moving on to the hat, I want this to be a dark, desaturated color to sort of offset the coat. And I'm going to use a gray here. I'm using Vallejo Charcoal here, which has great coverage. With that set, one of the last details we need to worry about here are the stakes. And I'm going to use a khaki color here to indicate the tip of the stake where he's carved the bark away. And of course, we're just going to follow Juan Hidalgo's recipe here. Thunderhawk blue, seafoam green dry brush. And if you want to bring out a little extra detail, a final dry brush of Fenrisian gray. And then, of course, Coelia green shade over everything. And we finish by painting the rim to match the set. Well, there you have it, a spooky trio of vampires and their vampire hunter just in time for Halloween. I hope you have a great holiday filled with spooky delights and candy. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was my genuine pleasure to make and share it with you. If you'd like to support the channel, check out our Patreon linked in the description below. Joining at any level grants you access to our private Discord server where a small but growing community of creators helps each other become better hobbyists every day with kind and honest feedback. And of course, you can always check out the t-shirt shop, bakingsodatees.com, where we create one-of-a-kind, unique designs, not available anywhere else, shipped directly to you. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.